good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the final discussion for today. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen a change in the way customers eat out. Home delivery or takeaways have become and continue to be the main mode of food consumption. Hence, packaging is most important. A panel discussion on sustainability and packaging in food delivery will be moderated by Mr. Tapan Vedia. He is a restaurant industry veteran and on Caterer Middle East's Power List 2020. Mr. Tapan Vedia is currently the CEO of PJP Investments Group, the owner operators of Papa John's in the UAE and Saudi Arabia. With 35 years of experience across India and Middle East, he has been associated with the development of hundreds of restaurants across these markets. The list is quite long. Currently focused on developing and expanding Papa John's in the UAE and KSA, Tapan is keen to give back to the industry from his deep knowledge and hands-on experience. Given the current crisis that the industry has now faced for over a year, he has dug deep to bring, his new, bring new insights and creative solutions in handling this business. Over to you, Mr. Vedya, all the best. Thank you, Shanti. That was a very nice uh, introduction, appreciate it. So um, let me introduce our uh, eminent panelists today. We have uh, Kim Thompson, owner and managing director at Raw Coffee Company. She is the first woman in the Middle East to obtain her specialty coffee association, coffee diploma, and a certified AST instructor. Additionally, Kim is a founding member of Gender Equity, a vocal supporter for the coffee farmers from around the world and the driving force for sustainable, ethical, and community initiatives. Welcome, Kim. Thank you. And tell us uh, what is a certified AST instructor, please. In uh, coffee, we have a global, globally recognized uh, body that's supposed to try and standardize the quality of everything. It's this, called the Specialty Coffee Association. And an AST is a certified trainer, so you can teach um, sensory, green trading, barista, and brewing. Oh, fascinating. Excellent. And we have uh, Dr. Mike Chitam. He's the Global Business Development Director at Hot Pack, uh, Hot Pack Global. Um, Mike joined Hot Pack Packaging in 2016 to spearhead the European expansion of this highly successful Middle Eastern company. He now oversees a wide variety of duties as Hotpack continues to increase its global presence with factories and offices distributed in key countries such as United States, Australia, United Kingdom, Panama, Morocco, Egypt, and many others. Welcome, uh, Mike. Thank you very much. Glad to be with you. Excellent. Let's kick off uh, the session. So historically, um, mankind consumed food where it was found. Folks caught, cooked, ate what they found where they found. They were also self-sufficient. So there was no real requirement of packing and carrying things. Neither for storage nor for transportation. When small needs came up, nature provided leaves, shells, etc. Later, containers were fashioned from natural materials such as hollowed logs, woven grasses, etc. As ores and chemical compounds were discovered, metals and pottery were developed leading to other packaging forms. That early progress has snowballed into a humongous evolution that we are witness to today. Dr. Mike Chitton, tell us the importance of proper packaging in food delivery. Yeah, I think one of the first advances in storing food was perhaps controlling the temperature because the key factor uh, of food, obviously, is that it's damaged by bacteria and it dries out as well. It loses moisture content. So I think one of the first um, advances was obviously the invention of the fridge around the start of the century. And then we moved towards freezers in the 60s, in the 50s, where food was frozen again, which controls the bacterial growth 
even at two, three degrees, the bacteria will slow down. So food without treatment can last for many, many days. After that, it was decided that there were packaging materials available, which would allow you to store outside of the fridge and store it on the shelves because sustainability in food is obviously about the shelf life. We want it to, to last a long time at home. We want it to last a long time in the supermarket shelves, even now even with all the technologies, there's a massive quantity of food in the UAE that is thrown away from the supermarkets. It's not even recycled or used for animal feed. It's simply thrown away. So uh, the industry has reacted with a number of materials and technologies to provide everything in plastic, in paper, aluminium, and most recently in the last 10 years, biodegradable materials, antibacterial, oxygen barriers, you name it, we've tried to develop it. We have three and a half thousand products now um, just for the food sector. So this is a, and it's advancing all the time. I never thought I would find food packaging so interesting coming from a medical background. So there we are. Right, so a bit of a uh, flashback um, and an interesting fact that um, um, with all uh, this, the packaging materials around us today. Do we know when was uh, the first production of commercial paper bags? When did that, where and when did that take place? That was in 1844 in the English city of Bristol. So uh, we've come a long uh, way since then. Of course, shortly thereafter in 1852, Francis Wall invented the bag making machine in the United States. And use of paper bags started back then. Um, Kim, please tell us the role of good packaging. Well, I own a coffee roasting business and it's a, it, we like to look at the coffee as a fresh product. So it's not something we want to see sitting on a shelf. So our requirements 14 years ago when we started the business, as Mike was saying, there wasn't a lot available for us with regard to um, recyclable even. And we wanted the product to stay fresh. Coffee oxidizes. So you often see a valve on the coffee bag. That's to let out the, um, the air and you don't want to cut all well, the nit nitrogen and you don't want the air to come back in because it, it degrades the coffee very fast as does moisture. Mm -hmm. So I for, for us, temperature control, moisture and air were priorities. Um, we have only just moved a year ago into uh, offering food and from our cafe inside the roastery. And to be honest, our learning curve has been very steep because I didn't want to use single-use plastics at all with any type of packaging. And the world that we've lived in for the last 18 months has been um, delivery or, you know, to bring people into the cafe wasn't as simple. We were lucky we have a big space, but uh, I believe we've spent a lot of time as a company investigating and trying to find the right packaging partners that would look after the quality of the food so that that first impression when the customer opened the packaging would be, it, when they saw the food, the first thing they're gonna see is the packaging. And it's our responsibility to look at the temperature control and the moisture and everything so that the food quality is gonna be good. But it's been a, it's been a really, it's been like a quagmire because I think there's so much advancement in this um, field and we weren't just uh, cost driven. We were looking for the best solution that was also good for the environment. So our learning curve has been very steep on packaging recently. I'm, I'm interested to hear, I'm going to be learning from Mike, I promise you. Sure. So um, we talked about the thousands and thousands of kinds of packaging uh, available these days. We, we at Papa John's, uh, our main product is uh, pizza and we just box these pizzas. So we focus all our uh, efforts on that one product of packaging, pizza boxes. But um, Mike, tell us what kind of packaging are available? Well, the initial packaging was mainly um, plastics. And there are a number of plastics used in the industry. The early products uh, that we saw were polystyrene. 
um, which is PS, which is not an eco-friendly product by any means. There are significant moves to get rid of polystyrene now out of the sector completely. And there are a wide variety of alternatives to polystyrene. It's not easily recycled. So the, one of the first products was uh, polystyrene. After that then came PP, polypropylene, and uh, polyethylene, which we have now, which is PET, which is a very nice clear plastic. The advantage of polypropylene and PET is that they are both recyclable. Okay, that's the key factor. Um, one of the big things we need to talk about in this session is recycling, because it's all right having biodegradable products and things like that, but the key thing is to recycle it. The UEE is, in our opinion, um, got a long way to go in terms of recycling. Our machines that we buy are the very best machines in the world, or we have 12 factories full of machines. But with the plastics, we can recycle. We can take, one of the machines can take up to 80% recycled content, but we can't buy it. The UAE and the other Gulf regions are not doing enough to provide us with these materials for the plastics. We can take it, but we can't buy it. So we're having to use virgin materials. And obviously, as you said, paper has been one of the oldest products. Um, and plastic for a long time uh, was the main product for food packaging. But more recently, with eco-awareness, green awareness, people are moving back to paper products. What's uh, also, aluminium is a very good product. Again, it's highly recyclable. It's used for takeaways, as, as we know. Um, and there's a whole range of new generation eco products such as bagasse which is a wonderful product and we're seeing bio coatings now which are being used so we're able now to give paper products the properties of plastic products with these special coatings we have pla again which was a product developed to be halfway between plastic and paper um, it's gone out of fashion now for a number of reasons so, but what we are seeing now is a new generation of paper products that have the properties of plastic. For example, they have oxygen barriers. We have aroma barriers. Uh, we can have it nitrogen filled, as Kim was saying. So it's advancing at a pace of knots. Uh, and more recently, in the last few weeks, we've seen the brakes being put a little bit on the green uh, packaging products, which I'll explain a bit later on. Sure. And Kim, uh, how about you? What kind of packaging, uh, different packaging do you use? So with the coffee, uh, we have, uh, it's a craft paper on the outside with an aluminium um, layer on the inside and a valve. But we're currently, we have about 10 different samples that we're sitting on at the moment while we make our decision because we've, we've been in operation for 14 years. We think it's time that we did a rebrand. Um, so we're currently going through that exercise at the moment. And I'm having to learn a lot about what the different um, uh, specialty words are i knew about the pet i don't i don't know what p slash pe is mike but they're telling me that that's also recyclable is that is that true ppe pe -E -E -E. slash pe i don't know what i don't know what that is actually P, I know what PE is polyethylene. Uh, while but... you're speaking next time, I'm going to go and try and see one of the quotations to be able to ask you, but it's, they're using terminology I don't understand. So I'm getting samples of material I like the feeling of that, that I believe they're telling me meets our requirements showing that it's recyclable. But again, um, it's not easy. And then for the we cafe... Have we... Sorry, we have our pet. Our pet, which is recycled PET. That okay. has a high... So maybe it's our pet you're talking about. Okay. I'll try and find the words and put it on the chat. And then we have um, a lot of the uh, paper takeaway food products and some bamboo uh, cutleries and things like that. What do you think of bamboo, Mike? It's great, actually. It has its uses. We're cutlery. We have uh, many things made. I even saw socks the other day manufactured yeah. from bamboo. In fact, mm -hmm. I was wearing wearing them, bamboo socks. And well, they do beautiful lingerie in bamboo now too. <laughs> <laughs> I have to order some. <laughs> in fact, I believe uh, uh, some of the bagasse containers that uh, Mike, you mentioned, uh, I think there's also a trick to mix them with, blend them with bamboo and make them more uh, waterproof. Uh, is that true? 
we've got some very good bamboo products now, which, uh, again, uh, we've got some reports I was going to show your listeners as an example to show that the amount of testing when you're looking at food packaging products, what you should be looking for in certifications, because there's all kinds of certificates around if you want environmentally friendly products. And if we look at one of the draft reports, um, it will allow your readers to, uh, your listeners to understand the standards which you should be expecting. Great, I think we have uh, Dr. Hessa join us. Uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Hessa Jafar Hassan Ali. Um, she is the acting manager of registration and permits section, health and safety department at Dubai Municipality. She has developed and managed the operations of many important programs, including the registration of different categories of consumer products. She's also responsible for managing health and safety permits in the Emirate of Dubai. Welcome, Dr. Hess. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, I apologize for being late to this forum. I was uh, having a management uh, meeting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to participate in today's uh, forum. Uh, and I hope that I can shall benefit uh, the industry in today's forum, inshallah. Would you like to tell us the uh, role of good packaging, Dr. Hessa? The good packaging? The role of good packaging in society. Yes, sure. We are in Dubai Municipality. Uh, I'm acting manager in the registration and permit sections in health and safety department. One of our control programs, we are controlling the food contact materials. We call it FCMs, or known internationally as FCMs. Uh, FCMs, as everyone know, uh, they are exposure and, uh, to FCM in our everyday life, okay? We found food available already uh, in, already coming in contact with this packaging, or we found also, or we are using the packaging that are intended to be in contact with food, uh, like the um, storage boxes, uh, our kids' snack uh, lunch boxes, etc. We are drinking uh, every time, every day, a juice that is coming already in contact with food. So we can say uh, it is one of the main uh, program in our uh, department that. Uh, we should ensure their safety by many measures. The first thing uh, that we are, we are registering these FCMs and we request the manufacturer or the brand owner to provide us many, uh, we can say regulatory requirements that I, if you want, I can even elaborate it in more details. Uh, post approval, we have a market surveillance during shipments, importations, uh, all over uh, all, U all UAE and uh, Dubai, especially because our authority in Dubai. In uh, addition, even during the marketing and trading of these FCMs or wine using in the restaurant, we also have a market surveillance. We check their safety, uh, ensure their safety. We withdraw some samples for testing to ensure they are still safe and as per the specifications that are given to the authority before approval. So this is basically about a uh, general uh, scheme of, of work uh, about the food contact materials. Great, let's talk about hygiene practices while packing food to deliver. Uh, Kim, would you take this? Uh, actually, this is, I can say, it is a very big umbrella. It can cover many practices inside the food processing area. Uh, we are in health and safety department. One of our big responsibility and role is that we also approve the chemicals that are used in these processing area, food processing areas, or even food contact the the surfaces that are uh, in contact with the direct food during processing, like the machinery parts, like the cutting boards in the restaurants, in the cafes, uh, even in the big uh, manufacturers. So all these uh, should be for sure cleaned, sanitized uh, in a protocol by using some chemicals that will not have any uh, harmful effect in the food or it will not migrate to the food. Uh, generally, if, or if you can give directly, I mean, these chemicals require certain, uh, certain risk assessment, we can say. And even product approval, we request a safety assessment report for this product, every product, uh, to make sure it's food grade, it's safe to be used 
in these uh, areas, critical areas. And uh, this safety assessment report is uh, usually provided by the NSF, if you are aware of this, and they have a regional office also in the UAE. So we, I think also, maybe if we have a food, uh, I think Mr. Bobby, if we have with us, there are many other practices that are responsible, uh, any other health inspectors, I mean food inspector, they can ensure that protocol or that standards. But generally, if I can focus on these chemicals uh, during product evaluation, product assessment, beside the assessment, we check the ingredient as well. Some chemicals are allowed to be used in this area. Like, uh, for example, the cutting board, we allow for chlorine-based product like hypochlorous acid, some quaternary ammonium compounds you are allowing. But if we are talking, for example, about direct disinfection of food, like vegetables and fruit wash, uh, this we can say some bleaching, some uh, chlorine based, some are corrosive. So they are not advised or we are not approving them to be used uh, in such uh, intended use. So this is the, we are guiding the industry to use approved products by Dubai municipality and uh, approved to check the intended uh, scope of approval as well. Because you know, some approved but are for certain applications, certain uh, scope of uh, work for that product. I know, great work. We know how uh, great uh, Dubai municipality is uh, managing uh, this aspect of the business, being uh, running so many restaurants that I do in Dubai. We know exactly what we must uh, comply with. So, uh, Kim Thompson, your thoughts on uh, hygiene practices while packing food to deliver? I agree. I think that the UAE, that is something that we do very well here. I, I get to travel when I'm buying coffee and I go to other um, roasteries and I see the more relaxed um, manufacturing of this food product. We're lucky because coffee is one of, a, it's very low risk. It's right down near the bottom of risk. There's no additives. Um, but we have protocol that we follow with regard to separating the, the green coffee, the roasted coffee. We treat the roastery like a kitchen. Um, we follow Hassat Food Watch, you know, all the local requirements here. Our, our team, we treat it like food. Our team have to have a PI, we have a PIC and food handlers cards. And these things are, I think it, it's really important. Important. I, th I think our environment here with the temperatures we deal with means that we're probably more at risk than some other countries. Um, and hygiene is something you want the consumer not to have to worry about, that they trust the process that everything has gone through. And absolutely. I mean, if the hygiene element is not in play, something is seriously wrong with business models. So absolutely, I agree. And then let me talk about the role of a good delivery partner uh, in as far as the whole uh, piece of packaging is concerned. A good delivery partner will do their best to train their drivers to ensure they put their logistical skills to work as efficiently as possible and ensure that the food reaches the end user in the best possible condition. This means as fast as possible, but without compromising on texture, presentation or temperature. It's all about making the customer order the food again. If the delivery partner ends up ends up being the weak link, the business has a serious problem. But the importance of sustainable packaging, which I think is the topic uh, of the times, and the choices available. Your thoughts, uh, Mike uh, Chitam? Sure, I think better just go back to the um, food packaging and hygiene, which we talked about before, uh, because this topic is about the packaging, not the food. There is a gold standard. We've been in this sector 25 years, and as the biggest packaging company, food packaging in the Middle East, we've looked at all the certifications. We've got ISO 9001, 22000, 14001, but there is one gold standard that your listeners should be looking for in a food packaging supplier and that is BRC. BRC has different grades of food packaging, uh, of food testing. It's a very detailed test. Everything from the hygiene, bacterial swabs, 
pest control, you name it, it's the most thorough testing I've seen. And we were fortunate at Hotpack to get a grade A, which was one of the only ones in the region. But even better than that, we pushed on, improved our criticisms, which were minimal, uh, and achieved a double grade A. So that, in my opinion, is the highest standard your consumer should be uh, looking for in a food packaging supplier. BRC, BRC certification covers all the sectors that Dr. Hesse talked about. Okay. Great. I think we have some questions from the audience. Let's take this uh, from Teklal Mahato. How much recyclable and non-recyclable UAE is producing per annum approximately? How can we move from non-recyclable packaging, single-use recyclable, or adopt the best circular economy practice and food industry? Um, who would like to take this question? I'm happy to do it. It's my specialist area. But uh, if, the, if the other two would like to speak first. No, go for it, Mike. We were interested to hear what you say. Yes. Okay, so what's happened in the last 10 years is everybody has jumped on the eco bandwagon, okay? We have three and a half thousand products, 50% of them are plastic. And for each of those, one of my roles has been to work with our um, a development team manufacturing to try and develop eco-friendly alternatives. So you can choose between a more standard product in plastic or paper, or have an eco-friendly bagasse or paper product. Um, but you have to look at the overall picture. For example, a plastic bag, a paper bag takes five times more energy to make than a paper bag. A plastic bag will be used multiple times at home. You'll carry many things in it. You won't just throw it away. And it can be fully recycled if the uh, systems are in place to recycle it. A paper bag obviously takes more energy to produce, water, chopping down trees, and maybe you might get two uses out of it. So the cost in terms of energy, in terms of potentially environmental issues for plastic is actually lower than uh, for paper in many examples. What also we've seen is that um, everybody's been using the eco, the green logos, and in Europe, in the last week, they've announced they're going to severely uh, clamp down on those terminologies now. You have to look at the whole cycle of the product, okay? That's not just the fact that it's compostable or biodegradable. An example being, why would you want to put, uh, take a, a food packaging product that's compostable and biodegradable and put it in the ground? We don't want it to go to landfill because not only will we have to chop down more trees to make the next range of products, but or use more oil to make the plastic, but we will also have to have the biogases coming from the degradation in the ground. So the key thing really in food packaging is to look at recyclability. And in that, the UAE has got a long way to go. We're seeing with the Expo team, where Hotpack is working with the Expo team now to try and ensure that there are um, eco products available at Expo, so we can show the world um, how strong the UAE is in this sector. But um, we are seeing the UAE really needs to improve its recycling. We can take recycled product, we can use it round and round again. These cups that I have on my desk here, these can be recycled six or seven times. You can take the old cups, you can repulp them, make new cups out of them round and round again. We actually have certificates on these it's, I think it says on there, recyclable, yeah, sustainable. We don't want it, well, sustainable is fine. We don't want it to be biodegradable. It is biodegradable, this is a special cup, it, but we want it to be recyclable. So we need to educate our consumers and our food sectors now to understand it's not just about biodegradability, compostability, it's principally about recyclability. Can I please ask you a question? Sorry, Tapan. Can I please ask you a question? Is there a company here at the moment that we could be collecting, for example, the cups and, and giving them to them so that they can reuse to remake them? Yeah, the cups is a, obviously coffee is a major sector mm. restaurants in the UAE. We all love our, our, our coffee. Um, and, and often we're with COVID, we've moved away from having the China cups in 
from having the China Cups in, in Starbucks to having a takeaway now, okay? Which is why we've developed this biodegradable cup. Okay, the problem with cups to date is that these cups have a polyethylene lining in them, PE, okay? Because it's a plastic that's coated inside them, you cannot take this cup and put it in the paper recycling bin because it has plastic in it. You can't put it in the plastic recycling bin because it has paper in it. So these have to go to landfill. Now, there are companies that will scrape the polyethylene out of them and separate them, but it's an expensive process. So we looked at this problem because we know how many of these are consumed. Uh, and we're talking to Expo 2020 at the moment now to get these in. Our production line is fully underway. And this is a completely biodegradable, compostable, recyclable cup coating. You can take this cup now. If you want to put it in the paper recycling, you can. With all the rest of the paper, it can go back to the paper mill, just be crushed with it and um, repulped like the rest of the paper for recycling, and you can make a new cup. Or you, can, uh, uh, or, or you can put it in the ground if it happens to get in the ground, and it will degrade uh, within a matter of months. It's 91% degraded, which is the gold standard for, uh, for that. So there are a whole range of new technologies coming along, um, which we are spearheading at Hot Pack to try and provide the food packaging sector. One of the key things is recycling. We need to educate our consumers and the government needs to support us in this uh, so that we have the range of recycled materials available to us. They're not at the moment. We're having to buy them in from other countries. And you can imagine the amount of landfill that's going into the ground in all GCC countries. It's uh, criminal that we can use these materials, but we don't have them. Right. We have another interesting question from Muhammad Altaf, and he's addressed you, Mike. Uh, five gallon bottles, the water bottles in market are made up of polycarbonate. Manufacturers are using recycled PC materials. Question is, what risks you find in such recycled polycarbonate bottles? There's a um... The food contact and migration is one of the problems we have to watch with recycled. Um, it's very easy with recycled plastic to get heavy metal um, contamination in it. There are a whole series of tests, which Dr. Hesse will know about, which test the food safety. But in particular, migration is a problem. These heavy metals and contaminants, aromatic um, uh, carbons will come out of the plastic. So. It, the manufacturing process needs to be very thorough, thoroughly vetted and uh, the testing needs to be extensive of recycled food contact materials. In fact, in Europe, Frig, I told you the story that we can make a cup seven times out of this waste, yeah, a new cup. But in Europe, you actually cannot do that. You cannot use recycled material as a food contact. So we would need to make a paper bag out of this or a cardboard box. But for example, we couldn't make a pizza box out of it because it's already had human contact. Dr. Hesse? Yes, I think that uh, should provide for a very good uh, answer to Muhammad. The same here with the UAE as well. Uh, we don't allow uh, an already recycled material to be used as a food contact due to many uh, associated risk or unknown or there is insufficient uh, assessment, risk assessment or studies done for this. So we are, yes, you are allowing to be used in other particles, other materials, other objects. Yes. Great. Um, we should have another question. Why should not the government promote recyclable plastic for food industry as this is a great contributor in waste? Dr. Hesa, would you like to take this question? Actually, uh, I will not speak on behalf of my department, but uh, as a general information that I have, uh, uh, the, the environmental impacts and the, all these initiatives, uh, it's not out, out scope of my department role. Maybe our role is only health and safety. But, uh, but inshallah, what we are hearing about our other department, like in the environment department, Dubai municipality and other federal authorities also, that yes, recycle is one of the major concern and the, especially their impact on the environment. And I know that there are many uh, big initiatives supporting this. 
and maybe you heard that also we are planning for the 50 year, the foresight. So there are many, inshallah, projects uh, that will be, inshallah, uh, that are planned for this purpose with the collaboration of many federal and local authorities in general. Great. Let's talk about uh, the challenges uh, faced by the industry. Um, Kim, would you want to take this on? I'm a mother and a grandmother, and I think for me, the challenges are trying to have food that is as natural as possible, and I'd love it to be seasonal, that type of thing. So having additives um, added to the food to extend its life is something that, you know, I don't like or want to support. And we live in a place where we can eat all the foods all year round without it having to be seasonal. So I look at it not just as the end product being delivered in the in the in the packaging, but it's the whole cycle of things. So to have better quality packaging hopefully means that we don't have to be um, doing unnatural processing to our food to extend its life, so that it becomes a commercial you know, commercially viable product. I want it to, I'd love it to see it um, meaning that the quality of the products that are, are available now as a manufacturer allow us to deliver a product with less additives, more natural. Um, because I think the technology in the last few years, uh, I, I'm having trouble keeping up with it. It's amazing. And I think also the fact that we have the all the you know the production kitchens now, which um, are delivering you know, and all the aggregators that are delivering the food. I don't think that's going to change, whether you like it or not. It's a, it's the way the world has become. You know, I'm still going to go to the cafes I like or the restaurants I like, where you know you don't need to care about the packaging. But I think for the majority of people, um, this new world is here to stay. True. And uh, Mike Chetan, what do you see as challenges? I participated in a forum uh, last month, which was talking about how do we feed the population of the world, which is set to double in the next two, three decades, um, because there simply are not enough cows or sheep or any of these animals' crops. There isn't enough land to produce the crops to feed this number of people. And one of the key areas we thought about as a packaging company is number one, controlling bacterial contamination and oxygen uh, oxidization of the food. So we can create a longer shelf life for the food. It doesn't get thrown away in the supermarkets. It doesn't get thrown away at home because it lasts longer. One of the other ideas we're looking at uh, and a big problem in the UAE is diabetes. People eat too much, yeah? Uh, they don't know their calorific intake. Obviously, the UAE has had a traditional uh, uh, diet and all the Western foods have come in, in into the UAE and uh, many, uh, nearly half of the population, adult population, has diabetes or pre-diabetes, which is a doctor concerns me as well. Um, in Europe, we're seeing a, a food being produced with a barcode on it. So you simply have your mobile phone. Every time you eat, you scan the barcode. And it keeps a track of how many calories you're eating in a day. That's a great way in food packaging to control the calorific intake, control the diabetes, and stop overeating and produce, allow more food to be available for future generations. So those kind of technologies where that's built into the food packaging will uh, be coming in the next five years, I'm sure. Great. Uh, would you like to add, Dr. Hessa, to the challenges you see? I didn't understand the question. I didn't hear it. Can you repeat it, Mr? The, the challenges you see with the packaging uh, industry in general. Uh, yes, uh, some challenges that we are, uh, there is a lack of, uh, of technical guidelines or regulations that cover all kinds of the FCMs, food packaging. Uh, even in Europe or worldwide, uh, there are some intelligent materials or some uh, intelligent, some materials that, you know, uh, like for example, we have some packaging, we heard, we, even the industry approach us 
There are some packaging that prolong the shelf life, for example, of the food. There are innovative uh, packaging. This all need uh, the, all the, like, the health authorities, health uh, organizations, institutions to come up with a clear framework, uh, uh, legal and uh, health uh, assessment about all these innovative. Last, maybe last time we, we found a very interesting thing that is straw making from rice, which is very nice. It's sustainable, it is biodegradable, it is uh, eco-friendly, uh, no, no harm for sure, inshallah, for the human. So every time we hear about innovation in the industry, using a nanotechnology, what are the impact, health impact? So, uh, so the, the regulatory framework should come up very fast. Should, they should have their opinion. They should control all these. They should set all these technical requirements so we can uh, يعني, meet with this uh, change in the industry. Sure. The rice straw is interesting. You can yes. Finishing your slope, you can jump on it. We have them in our range. We have rice straws, paper straws, every kind of straw you can imagine. That's a, a big move. In Europe, they just banned the plastic straw and the plastic cotton buds as well. So, yeah, they're available, readily available. We'll take the last uh, question from John Marco Simon. While we are facing pandemic COVID-19, what relevant actions do you do within the organization to minimize the pandemic in terms of packaging? Kim, would you like to take this? And could you repeat it, please? Yes. While we are facing the pandemic, what relevant actions you do within the organization to minimize the pandemic in terms of packaging? To minimize the pandemic? To minimize uh, the effect or the spread. Well, I think uh, recycling is the biggest thing that we can do. You know, we, there are recycling. Um, it's not a, it's not as advanced as some other countries that I've lived in, but there are we we have all our we get plastic paper uh, uh, recycled collected from our business every week. Um, for at our where the apartment where I live, there are, there are points down in the rubbish area where we can take our plastic and our glass and our paper. So I think recycling is a very big thing that it's, I'd love to see more support from the government, but I also think it's an individual responsibility. Um, I think no one's really, well, we haven't really mentioned water, but I think if food security is gonna be a challenge, water is gonna be a real challenge. So, you know, from a manufacturer's perspective, it would be to try and be looking at the way you manufacture your food with the least amount of wastage uh, in the process and the packaging is part of that. So recycling that packaging. Oh, excellent. So um, no question uh, we owe our planet and future generations. Single use plastic is unacceptable. We all must work towards achieving the best way forward. Yes, sustainable packaging must meet the functional and economic needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Sustainability is not necessarily an end state, but is a continuing process of improvement. Uh, thank you, uh, Clean uh, Middle East. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hessa, uh, Kim, uh, Dr. Mike Chittam. Thank you very much uh, for being part of this uh, discussion. Um, and uh, I hope uh, the audience enjoyed the session. Uh, thank you. Shanti, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Vedya, for a very, very love, very well moderated session, I may say. And thank you so much to all the panelists, uh, Dr. Mike, Kim, Dr. Hesa. Thank you so much for having come on uh, board for this discussion. I just want to conclude uh, the event because this was the last session for the day. Uh, so thank you to everybody who has, uh, you know, attended the session for the, the for the past three hours. Uh, my sincere thanks to the panelists and presenters for the day. It's been a pleasure to learn from you all. I would also like to thank our sponsors, the platinum sponsor being Reza Hygiene and our silver sponsors, EPSCO Hygiene International, ST and Magic Touch. 
Tomorrow is the second and last day for the food service hygiene dialogues. So I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow for another exciting day of sessions and discussions. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.